Welcome to a new exciting episode of our show, All Things Delivered. Today we'll be joined by Amazon Global Mile and we'll be looking into cross-border transportation and logistics. So join us for this exciting episode of All Things Delivered. Technology innovation has never moved as fast as it is today and it will never move this slow again. So now is the time to accelerate your supply chain transformation at the speed of AWS. Join us to explore the supply chain of the future today. I'm Kimberly Haggerty. And I am Michele Sancricca. We're going to dive deep into the end-to-end -end problems across the supply chain, focusing on the customer and the technology. We are at the fourth stop of our supply chain journey, international transportation, where a one-stop shop for operational logistics is very much sought after. Our guest, Amazon Global Mile, describes cargo tracking enabled by Amazon SageMaker, fed by IoT sensors on the edge and relaying on DynamoDB and Lambdas. Elsa, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, of course. Thank you for having me today. So my name is Ilsa. I, uh, as you can hear, I'm um, not from the US, <laughs> so I'm South African. I, li I love saying that I grew up in this industry. This industry is uh, international transportation, and, uh, and this is really my world. And I guess you run uh, Amazon Global Mile, uh, which is a critical component of uh, Amazon's end-to-end -end supply chain. Would you like to walk us through how Amazon Global Mile helps to deliver the Amazon customer promise? You know, online retail has uh, grown so significantly uh, over, the, over the last 10 years and has become such a significant portion of overall retail industry. But probably more, in, more, more relevant, more significant is um, uh, selection or inventory that comes from uh, other countries. So uh, cross-border uh, online retail has grown at a much more rapid pace, probably four times the, 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 the growth rate than uh, traditional retail or other online retail. So this is where Global Mile comes into the equation. So from an Amazon perspective, uh, we, we love bringing selection to our customers and, and you know, really bringing the widest variety of selection. As a result, a lot of uh, sellers uh, see the opportunity to start their businesses uh, with Amazon um, on Amazon.com. Uh, these sellers are, um, you know, they love their products, they love their customers, but they're not as crazy about the transportation and logistics environment. So, so this is where Global Mile comes into the equation. So we help them. We help them ship their product. Uh, we make uh, air and ocean transportation available for them. Uh, we help consolidate it because often it's very costly for them to, to ship it on their own. So we consolidate it. Uh, and then we bring it into, um, into our network for, for our customer base. And, uh, and we, we try and make it as simple as possible for them. Shipping cross-border is not easy. Uh, and this is where Global Mile plays a big role. So I think you hit on something key when you talked about the growth rate. So if you take the growth rate and then you add on to that all the constraints that we're seeing across to the end-to-end -end supply chain and all the disruptions that we're experiencing, how is Amazon's Global Mile approaching that to try to mitigate risk? Uh, I think the, the biggest, the, the best way um, to address this is through automation and digitization because that allows you to make better decisions, quicker decisions, um, and hopefully see a little bit into the future. So that's that's the one the, the one way that we're um, addressing it. And then the other one is um, there's a lot of opportunity to to harness capacity and and make sure that uh, that uh, you're fully utilizing available capacity as opposed to having um, you know air moving. So, so that's the, one, the second area that we are trying to improve the utilization rates and efficiencies within the global supply chain. So when you talk about capacity, you can't talk about capacity without constraints. And the physical constraints, especially at the ports, is really impacting us from a global scale. So when you talk about physical constraints and capacity, how are you are looking at that and approaching that? We've kind of looked at it from uh, three different angles. The one is uh, we have to improve the speed of responsiveness. Uh, so, so things happen. Uh, you know, capacity constraints right now is not something that is new. So, so, but the ability to respond quicker so that you can make better up and downstream decisions is the first area that we need to improve um, or, or, or double down in. The second one is granularity of visibility. So it's, it's okay to have visibility, but you have to go a level deeper in terms of visibility to make better decisions or more informed decisions. So that's the second one. Uh, second one. And then the third one is around um, finding a way to be more predictive. Um, so, and I, I say it in that order because I think that's the order that you really have to have it in. But at the end of the day, you establish a unique source of truth, hopefully, and you can use this data if the quality is sufficient 
uh, 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 to feed processes and workloads like machine learning. And I know that you guys are using uh, uh, AWS SageMaker uh, to manage the pipeline of your machine learning uh, processes. So would you like to tell us more about it? But really, it starts with getting the data um, and and making sure that we've got access to the data. So um, we do that either through um, through uh, integrations or physical, um, like IoT uh, devices that we we collect data from. From there, uh, what we do is is we then um, store the data uh, and um, and then we check for completeness and, and make sure that uh, that it's accurate and complete because um, because there's not necessarily one single source of truth. And, uh, and then from there, we apply business rules and algorithms uh, to make better decisions, whether that is in our planning systems um, or our routing systems, um, or even decisions that we eventually want to pull forward in um, when, when, we, when our customers are making replenishment decisions, how can they make uh, better decisions? That's fantastic. And I would like to go back to the IoT topic because I know that you're running a very interesting uh, experiment with uh, uh, track and trace of ocean containers using IoT. And uh, you, you are using uh, uh, AWS IoT Core to enable data to be uh, um, uh, transmitted to the cloud. And then we use uh, Kinesis to analyze in real time, right? Because we, we know that real time analysis of operational data is super important, right? Yes, yes. Um, and, and it's really the, the, the goal there is to address the, the visibility problem uh, in a big way. So um, a lot of your information you get retrospectively uh, and it's not, uh, and it's updated after the event, uh, which is, which is, useful but not that useful so so really getting that information real time such as um the ex the proof of concept that we we're driving with right now is is to get uh, for instance when you know a trailer is stuck uh in chicago we uh we we can collect that information and if we start seeing trends that this is happening more and more we can then pull that information back into our planning and routing systems that that help us um help us uh, uh, avoid the chicago node uh, for instance and route them to to another area so that, so so having that um that real time information um through the devices is 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 uh, is really useful for us um, um as we look at um uh, getting to a level of uh, using visibility to become more predictive uh, in the way that we are um, executing. So if you look at the nodes across the global mile, I'm sure that there's lots of not only technical challenges with the data, but also business challenges and how to use that data to protect the customer. So can you help us give a little insight into what some of those challenges are and what you're doing to address it? Yeah. So. Um, Where's my stuff? Is the biggest single um, single question that our customer base asks us, and uh, of course we try and avoid avoid that. So that is where we want to pull back and then um, allow different types of decisions at that point in time and avoid the where's my stuff question. So we see that as a um, on the one side, our customers want to see it, uh, so it's the visibility, but we want to avoid that question um, as much as possible because um, uh, we we should have a you know, on-time delivery or a 100% um, accurate delivery, and the customer doesn't need to ask that question. So you have all the data uh, uh, in the cloud uh, ready for you to be used. How do you use this data to improve the customer experience and, and deliver uh, uh, more services to, to the end customer? So our, our in-state vision is uh, to enable customers that are shopping for shipping, um, to enable them to have the best information on hand to decide uh, what they need to send where and what quantity and how they how they should be shipping it. Because ultimately what they want to do is make, make sure that they've got um, their uh, uh, inventory in stock. So this data allows us um, to, to pull um, not only into the supply chain and execution, but really empower our customers to make better replenishment decisions um, as um, you know, demand changes or supply chain conditions change, they can make much better uh, business decisions, which helps them uh, grow their business, even expand geographically. So when you talk about making the business decisions, you want to make the right business decision at the right point in time. And if you look at all the different systems that the data is housed in, that's got to be a challenge because we all know that the data is not harmonized across all these different systems. So what are you doing to help reduce the impact to the variation of data across all the systems? The, the, the transportation industry is a fragmented industry. Um, so when you get a whole bunch of information from different sources at different times, it's really, really difficult to, to ensure that, that it's accurate and it's usable uh, at that point in time. Uh, so once again, we do use machine learning to, to help us with that. 
Um, uh, and, and what we do is, is we take a whole, a whole bunch of information from the different sources, we arbitrage it, um, and, then, uh, and then we fill in the blanks or we verify the blanks um, to create that single source of truth so that we can take action. We believe that this is the, the best way of getting to a point that we can get to the single source of truth. Would you like to uh, maybe work us through how your data scientists and, uh, uh, and uh, SDs are using uh, SageMaker to, for instance, manage their notebooks and uh, 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 their uh, algorithm and train their data uh, to deliver value to the business? Yes, uh, there's, there's a couple of areas that we're working on. Um, uh, the one is, uh, maybe starting from the beginning, is just around uh, demand forecasting. So, um, you know, a forecast is generally inaccurate the moment you publish it. Uh, so, um, and then you want to put demand forecasting on top of that. It's, it's very interesting. But, um, but, but that's where we're using um, uh, machine learning technology to, to, uh, to help us improve um, and learn from um, trends, uh, externalities uh, to improve our demand forecast. And that will then ultimately help us plan better from a capacity perspective. Because uh, capacity and access to capacity is the name of the game. So that's the one area. The, the other area that we're focusing on is planning, uh, especially in 2022, uh, being able to, to plan and then to adjust the plan quickly based on changes, using machine learning technology to, to help do that quicker and faster and at scale. Um, is the second area that, that we, um, we, we're focusing on. And then there's a third area, uh, uh, really um, you know, uh, focusing on the customer, is um, uh, we really want to plan to a promise. You know? So we want to get to that predictive state where we can tell a customer, hey, this is when you're going to get it, and then plan to that and make sure that we adjust our routing decisions um, and our uh, transportation decisions in accordance to that. So cloud technologies are definitely helping Global Mile uh, to deliver uh, prime deliveries at our doorsteps on time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I'd be interested to know what you thought of how you could take lots of different pieces of data and aggregate them together to get to that final source of truth and how it relates to a global freight forwarder. There really is no single source of truth today. However, I believe we are taking the right steps to get there. And if you look at the complexities across the end-to-end -end supply chain, the reason there's no single source of truth is because of all the different disparate systems across all the different nodes of the end-to-end -end supply chain. And then you add in all the different design and configurations of the data. You add in all the different data attributes. You add in the different levels of data maturity across all the different nodes. And there really doesn't seem to be an easy way to get there. So it's going to be a journey. But I think we're taking the right steps from a technical standpoint to help mitigate risk today until we can get there tomorrow. Data Lake is a very cool concept, but to get there, there is a long way. And everything starts from ingesting data from multiple data sources. And the problem of freight forwarder, for instance, is to track shipments. And to track a shipment inside a, a, an intermodal containers, traveling from continent A to continent B, you need to track data coming from IoT devices. And this is where, for instance, Amazon IoT Core can be very handy in uh, managing uh, the way we are uh, transferring data from the edge to the cloud. But then you have other data sources like uh, AIS or GPS data coming from vessels. And there you need a service like Kinesis Livestream to stream data in a way that is uh, 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 real time and you can do also analytics on top. But you can go even further. You think of uh, Amazon Ground Station if you, if you want to manage uh, 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 satellite communication at scale. Sounds like a lot of IoT in there, but I know IoT in Ocean has historically been a challenge. Once you get the data, you have to be able to visualize the data. And if you look at how the industry has been trying to visualize the data, they're doing it with a bunch of static dashboard displays. Where we need to be today and what some of the solutions I've used in the past when it comes to wartime planning and visibility is a control tower. You really need to have that dynamic control tower that's not only showing you everything that's going on, it's also predicting risk and it's giving you alerts and notifications and it's showing you through some sort of business logic to say, here's the risk and here's how we think the best way to adjust to this risk is based on you know, certain criteria from a prioritization. If you think about supply chain control tower, they solve for operational issues. So it's very dynamic, near real time, 
and you need to have uh, real-time notifications that you can handle, for instance, through Amazon Simple Notification Service, sending text and messages to key stakeholders when problems are arising. And then you have another level of complexity, which is, which is the dashboard for financial analysis post-factum that you can do, for instance, with the Amazon uh, QuickSight. And finally, you have a lower level of complexity in terms of uh, the end-to-end -end supply chain, which is the last mile delivery, where you need maps and turn-to-turn -turn notification that you can achieve with services like Amazon Location Services. So here are the three takeaways. Number one, 20% growth in e-commerce and global e-commerce. That's a big number. Number two, we want to be able to use the cloud to be able to handle that growth. And number three, multiple data sources are important for being able to create a single source of truth that allows us to be able to act and have a resilient supply chain. Join us next time on All Things Delivered.